Right, let's actually continue with Mania Plus. We are going to be playing as a different character today. Okay, we are going to play as this guy today. I live to fight. Yeah, when he says, I don't need weapons, I am the weapon. Actually, he does still use them to some extent. He like, flings them into enemies, but he doesn't like swing them like cross up, if that makes sense. In other words, he can like, reflect weapons and smack them into enemies, but that's it. So he won't like, hold it in his actual hand and actually swing it at enemies. Yeah, we gotta watch out for the poison. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, on harder difficulties, the poison doesn't actually hurt you much more. Yeah, I think it's just like the same amount, regardless of what difficulty you're playing it on. There's another character in this game called Rue, short for Kangaroo, and he actually doesn't actually touch weapons like at all. He, he won't even pick them up and throw them at enemies. So yeah. Now because I'm playing as Shiva, he is a very different character to play because obviously he won't use weapons except from uh, flinging them into enemies so you have to actually be very careful when enemies are using long range attacks and such but there you go I mean it would make sense if Shiva could actually use long range attacks just imagine how much harder it would be to play a Shiva if he refused to eat food off the ground. <laughs> oh my word. I find stage 5 to being a little bit easier than stage 4 in some, in some cases because at least you don't fall off the edge and go right into pitfalls and such. And by the time you fight against those annoying girls that jump kick you, you're like out of harm's way of falling into the pits. The sad thing about Shiva is that he's still not as good as 3 to 8 1 Adam and he's definitely not as good as Cherry is either. So those two are by far my two top favourite characters to play as in this game. <laughs> what the good of at least done is make Shiva be able to hit really hard like a brake train like 3 to 8 1 Adam can. Because the strangest thing about the strangest thing about Shiva is that he doesn't even hit that hard. I mean he's got some really good combos and such but that's about it. There's a lot more healing items around here compared to stage 4, so I think that's why stage 5 is not that hard. I mean, Barbon's proper hard, but at least it's like, you, at least it gives you a lot of healing items between it to make up for the fact that this is a long stage. <laughs> you know, there's actually been people commenting um, on Streets of Rage 4 based videos, not on my videos, but on other Streets of Rage 4 videos, right? And so people are like saying, oh, I hope that Sega does a Golden Axe remake or a sequel in some way. I'm like thinking, oh my word, that game is hilarious. I remember playing that more than 20 years ago. It was like one of the funniest games ever. <laughs> All I remember from that game is when a male enemy like dies, they're like going, oh! Oh! And when a female warrior that you kill dies, they'll go, oh! Oh! <laughs> And we used to make fun of them, like, going, oh! Oh! <laughs> and for some reason, when the old man that you play as, the dwarf guy, right? He goes, Poof! when he dies. I don't know why they make him sound like he's getting gagged or something. <laughs> but there you go. And what is with the gladiator man that you play as? Can't remember his name, right? But it's like, why is he only in just like a pair of pants and boots, pretty much? And the female gladiator is pretty much in a bikini and boots and that's it as well. <laughs> Whereas, like, the dwarf guy, he wears, like, the most clothes out of everyone. So it's where me and my mates used to deliberately play as him. <laughs> because he's, like, the most decent one. And also, he's actually quite good to play as anyway. So, uh, there's that. You know, to be honest, right, the dwarf guy, right, he has clothes that reminds me of Link from Legend of Zelda, so it's like Old Man Link. <laughs> oh, jeez Louise, I got hit. If there is a Golden Axe remake in the future, I don't know what to think. It's just so funny. It's, it's just like, oh my way. <laughs> Are they going to do the, oh, oh. 
start all over again. Oh, and another thing is, every time like someone dies, the music like stops every single time on the uh, Mega Drive version. It's so funny. It's like, do 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 do. Oh, oh, do 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 do. <laughs> like what is going on? Like the music gets interrupted like every like 10 seconds. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, by the way, the little tune I was just singing just now, that's actually from one of the uh, Game Boy Mega Man games. It's the one with Enka in it anyway. I think it's uh, Mega Man World 1. Yeah, it's from Mega Man World 1. It's on the Game Boy anyway. It's the one where you fight against uh, Enka at the end. Yeah, that's definitely worth sacrificing a tiny bit of health just to get that. Yeah, that Kubo guy is going to be back alright. Right, we'll leave that cake there for a little bit. I love how the pipe robot is like and does not sound like a human being at all. Someone told me that she's supposed to be a robot, but that doesn't kind of make much sense to me, but oh well. Oh no, not more Big Ben's. <laughs> His flame blowing thing actually takes off a lot of health, so you really have to mind out for that. I mean, what kind of commentary am I providing in this Streets of Rage video? It's just like, oh yeah, let's talk about a man with only uh, a pair of pants and boots on. Uh, it's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> that reminds me, right? Capcom did a similar thing with Yurian from uh, Street Fighter games, right? And so he has like this, he has like this business suit on, and he just, get ready to die. He literally like flexes his muscles, well, rips his own clothes off, and all he has made is literally V-Pants. And me and my mates used to make fun of him, calling him V-Pants. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's funny because this is actually official, right? It's where he actually kidnaps uh, someone from Chun-Li's orphanage called Lee Fen, right? And imagine Chun-Li saying to Guile, Oh no! Lee Fen's been kidnapped! Who was he? What was he wearing? Oh, uh, well, he was only wearing like white pair of pants and they were V-shaped. It's like, okay, imagine how weird that would be to hear that over the phone. <laughs> Oh wow, there's only like 7 of you guys, I was expecting like 14 of you, like back in stage 2. Yeah, I should change Shiba's alternate attack into being the flying kick move, because that one leaves him way less open. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to use a special here, and then get back my green health. Wow, that actually really worked out. <laughs> well, that's why you use specials, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, not these biker girls again. Right. Let's use that pillar right there, so that we can stop him from headbutting us. Believe it or not, you can actually get one of the biker girls get stuck like on a table or a chair. And you can actually just concentrate on beating up the other girls, while the other one's like stuck. <laughs> oh, a little bit off topic, right? It's where in this anime I watched called How Heavy Are Your Dumbbells? There's this uh, gym instructor called Naruzo, not Naruto, but Naruto, and he literally like flexes his muscles and is only well, has remaining is black V pants instead. And there's this white haired girl in there who makes fun of him saying, Why is he only in his underpants? Must be a Japanese thing. And it's so funny because she's supposed to be from Russia, so that's why she's supposed to have a Russian accent, so that's why. And it's like, that's like one of the funniest uh, episodes ever in anime history. Like, like people actually notice that there's a man with all the V-Bands on and that's it. <laughs> it's just like, no one else points that out in Street Fighter. Not very much anyway. <laughs> anyway, back to the sequel thing. I really do hope that Sega makes a Shinobi 4 someday. I know that there is definitely a sequel to Shinobi 3, but there was one called Shinobi X and that was, I can't remember which console it was on, I think it was on Dreamcast, right? And there's another one that's on PS2, but the strangest thing about the PS2 one that I saw is that there's this female ninja that you play as in it, and she doesn't act very much like Joe Masashi, like, at all. It's like, it felt like it wasn't even a Shinobi game, to be honest, that PS2 one anyway. <laughs> if they do bring back Shinobi, I hope they make it 2D and not 3D, because, uh 
I get that there's like two generations of gamers because there's like there's like me who's like in the middle age generation and there's like the modern gamers well it's like there's two generations of gamers there's like me and a lot of other adults right from like the 80s and 90s and then there's like the modern gamers they're like the new people so the thing is though, that the problem with making 2d based games especially to make it more retro like that that's only gonna appeal to the older audiences Whereas if you try to appeal to the new audiences, you have to make the graphics like really good and stuff, and make it like 3D especially. Because most of nowadays games are actually 3D. Um, I mean, Street Switch 4 is a nowadays game, and I'm playing it right now, and it's actually pretty fun. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, there is an arcade machine in the background, but we're not going to bother with those until the very end. Now you'll notice, oh, and why are you not actually going into the arcade machines? Because I'm going to save that up for a separate video where I actually take them on. Now, there's only four in the whole game. And the first three are actually not that hard. But the last one, the fourth one, that one's proper hard to actually win against. And the prize isn't even worth it. So all you get is like one power star and that's it. And it's just like, you have to fight against two bosses with only one life. And it's like, it's so not worth it. It's proper hard. And you usually end up using up the star moves just to get that one power star, so it's not really worth it. Also, you have to be careful with the arcade machines, because sometimes an enemy can actually break it before you can even go inside of it with a taser. <laughs> By the way, when I do go inside of the uh, arcade machines, I'm going to play as Cherry because she's so broken. <laughs> when I mean by broken, I mean as in overpowered. She's clearly the best character in the game alongside uh, Streets of Rage 1 Adam. But then again, look at Zangief. He's, he only fights with like a pair of pants on and boots on and some bracelets and that's it. I have played a Sega game before called Vector Man. Not to be confused with Spider-Man or Batman or anything else like that. Yeah, there's another Sega IP called Vector Man. I remember there's definitely a Vector Man 1 and a Vector Man 2. But I read that there was supposed to be a Vector Man 3. But because the Dreamcast got outsold so much in the sub-production of Dreamcast, they had to cancel Vector Man 3. So unfortunately, this Vector Man dude got his game cancelled. So now he knows what it's like for Mega Man Legends 3 fans. It's just like, yeah, he shares your pain. <laughs> Speaking of cancelled games, I don't get why we're allowed to have like all these uh, crazy games like Shaq Fu, yes, there's a bad game called Shaq Fu, and Superman 64, which is one of the worst games in existence, but yet we're not allowed Vector Man 3, we're not allowed uh, Mega Man Legends 3, we're not allowed Sonic Adventures 3, which has never been greenlit, obviously, but so many people want Sonic Adventures 3, yet they're not doing it! I don't know why Sega won't do it! I mean, is Sega scared of making money or something? I don't get it. I mean, whenever I read up on Sonic sales, they tend to sell like at least a million. <laughs> I mean, Sonic 1, as far as I've read, that's all like over 5 million copies. I don't know the exact number. Some websites say that, that Sonic 1 sold 15 million copies, but that's including like the port versions of it and everything, you know, the re-releases and everything. But there you go. But I think the Mega Drive version sold 5 million or something, 5 or 6 million. But yeah. I can't remember how many sales Sonic Adventures 1 and 2 sold, but I know that it definitely sold millions by far. So I don't get why they can't make Sonic Adventures 3. <laughs> Too bad you don't get to interact with Rue here. I quite like him. Wow, look how many healing items there are just before Barbon. <laughs> There's a very good strategy behind beating Barbon. One strategy is to not destroy the motorcycles because if you do, his cronies appear. You know, those biker girls are like headbutt into you. Yeah. If you don't destroy the motorcycles, you can actually just make it one on one and Barbon's proper easy without his cronies. But you do lose out on getting all the food and the power star and everything. Oh man, Barbon's been upgraded to like massively in this game is just like he's got so many ways to counteract your moves i mean he was he used to be like the stage one boss back in Street Rage 2 and it's like and then you have to fight him again like much later on in Street Rage 2 so good job that in this game 
in story mode. You only have to fight Barbon once. Good job there's like no backup requested and then Barbon appears. <laughs> it's like, oh no, just imagine how much harder it would be. I know that Barbon's in the survival mode because you fight pretty much nearly every single enemy in survival mode anyway. There's a way of being able to pin uh, enemies like Barbon up against the wall and keep hitting them over and over, but uh, I think it requires a lot of special moves and it's very risky because you can actually get out the pattern and get hit and then lose all your health, including the green health. There's been people saying on Reddit, Oh, I hope Streets Rage 5 comes out. It's like, I actually think Streets Rage 5 should definitely come out. I mean, we should have got Streets Rage 4 like back in like 997 or something. But at least we got it now. And people are making a joke saying, Oh, I hope we don't have to wait 25 years for Streets of Rage 5. <laughs> so I don't think it'll take that long, judging that Streets of Rage 4 sold 2.5 million units and they just released DLC. So that's getting Sega and their uh, co partners more money. So I think Streets of Rage 5 is like probably going to be 2023 or 2024. But we'll just leave it as that. Yeah. Yeah, he's nearly done, and with me having a spare life, I think I'll be able to do it. People have been saying, you know, whenever he says FINAL CRASH, it sounds like he's saying WHITE NOW CRASH! It's like, no it doesn't, I don't I don't hear any WHITE NOW CRASH, <laughs> like at all, it's like, I think they're just messing about, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gonna have to dodge all his spin kicks. Oh. Yeah, let's just use his ultra. We're at the end anyway. You do get 500 points if you don't use a uh, power star, but I just can't be bothered maintaining it. And there you go, that's stage 5 done! With me suddenly having like extra lives and extra power stars out of nowhere, I think. I think everyone is going to be able to tell that I used assist there. Yeah, D rank, of course that was going to happen. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to customise his attacks a little bit. Uh, I've only unlocked a few of his attacks, so yeah, we'll go ahead and change these ones real quick. Right, okay. We're in like probably one of the longest stages in the whole game. This takes like 10 minutes to get through, so sit tight because we're going to be doing a lot of fighting here. Quite surprised that Shiva will have no problem flinging a boomerang at enemies. <laughs> Let me look at that. To be fair though, there's a lot of bare-chested boys in this game. <laughs> there were quite a lot of bare-chested boys back in Streets of Rage uh, 2 especially, because uh, especially in Streets of Rage 4, you got Max, who's got a bare chest, Floyd, who's also got a bare chest, you got Abedid, who's also a bare-chested man, even though he's from Streets of Rage 2, but he's also in this game as well. And then you got Dylan, who's bare chested as well, and then you got the Donovan guys, who's also bare chested. And it's like, wow. Technically, she was also bare chested man as well, but it wasn't back in Street of Rage 2 and 3. I'm sure I've actually missed someone out, but oh well. And it's like, what is with all these shirtless points? <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> to be fair though, there are characters like Sagot and Feelong who are also bare chested as well. Well, Sagot's only in like shorts and bandages and that's it. <laughs> Back in Street Fighter 2 anyway. I mean, can you imagine like walking down the street and seeing so many bare chested men walking around with pipes and stuff? It's like, I want to be bare chested because it's cool! <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> You know, this Chinatown in Streets of Rage 4 kind of reminds me of the Chinatown back in Revenge of Shinobi and yes I have got a let's play of that that I did not that long ago but I like the music in um, Re Revenge of Shinobi with the China area much more than this area to be honest but there you go. I mean Chinatown music in this game sounds pretty good but I still prefer the Revenge of Shinobi to Chinatown music. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> just an opinion ladies and gentlemen, just an opinion. Oh man, right, it's where there's a game called Fire Emblem Face, right? And unfortunately, I didn't actually buy the game. I just watched some guy play it, right? Especially since there's like three versions of the same game. So it's like, well, why would you want to spend £90 buying the same game three times? Especially since 
half the game is exactly the same across the board. It's just who you get on your team that's different, and the story's mostly different, but there you go. But anyway, they don't ask me why, but there's this really funny thing you can do in Fire Emblem Fates. I don't know why it's in this game, but not in the other ones, right? There's a skill called Mischievous, right? And you can literally blast enemies' armor off them, and all I've got remaining is like underwear, and that's it. It's just like, why? Why is this? <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, and um, by the way, when you do use the mysterious skill on an enemy, right, is where their defense goes down low because all they're wearing, especially if they're a man, is like a pair of pants and that's it, right? And it's where if it's a female enemy that you uh, use the mischievous skill on. Now, obviously, she still has a top on, but you know, it's just like, why would you put that in a game? It's like, why would you put that in a strategy RPG game? That's just so weird. But it's also hilarious because, you know, it's just like... It's funny because Fire Emblem series used to be for like 7s and up. But for some reason, Fire Emblem Fates, just that odd one game, when I read it online, it's like 15s and up. Is it because of the mysterious skill? I don't know. But there you go. Oh, and by the way, um, there's like this one DLC episode where there's like this friendly competition going on on the, like this one island, right? And it's where the Fire Emblem characters are like, oh, we're going to have to compete against each other. And the most hilarious thing is that because you're fighting amongst yourselves in kind of like a duel sort of way, so nobody actually dies, right? It's where the most funniest thing is that they're armed with skills like mischievous and there was this one gamer that shouted my clothes <laughs> and yet even when it was female enemy versus female enemy it basically became like you know senran kagura now that game is clearly for like you know not made for like five year olds so you know it's just like yeah i think fire emblem developers like looked up senran kagura because why would they put the mischievous skill in the game it's, it's so strange because it's like, this mischievous skill is not in any other Fire Emblem game, it's only in Fire Emblem Fates. Now, I'm just glad that Streets of Rage doesn't do that sort of thing. Because <laughs> it's like, well, to be fair, there's already a bunch of bad tested boys. <laughs> and a girl wearing a skirt. <laughs> and literally, you can see her up a skirt every time she kicks or what's anyway. By the way, a couple blades if you're wondering. To be honest, I am actually quite glad I didn't buy Fire Emblem Fates. It's not just the fact there's three versions of the same game and only like 50% of it's different. There's some really strange conversations in that game. And a lot of people actually thought, yeah, that is actually really weird, right? Basically, I'll just say the bottom line, there's a lot of really weird, uh, like, foster siblings relationships in that game. I'll tell you a very big example, right? Basically, there's like this female character in Fire Emblem Fates called Sakura, right? Uh, not to be confused by Sakura from Street Fighter or the Sakura from Naruto or any other Sakura out there. This is the Fire Emblem one, right? It's where the strange thing is that it's not just her, right? She, there's literally like these conversations that go on called support conversations, right? And it's where it's like, oh! We're not actually related, so we can actually get married! And it's like, uh, okay, that's really weird how she literally calls you, like, brother th throughout, like, most of the game, and then she finds out that you're not actually related to her, and then you can actually marry her, because Corrin is basically you. <laughs> the player. And it's like, okay, that's really weird. And it's not just that, right? There's, like, other characters uh, who are kind of like that as well because there's there's someone called Camilla oh my word she's she's quite over it to be honest right she literally calls you baby brother etc right and she's a bit like a yandere who actually wants to kill anyone just for you even if they're trying to, even if they just like flip you on the forehead she really wants to kill people but basically it's like Camilla's like oh well we're not actually related so I can actually marry you and it's like okay there's some really weird story writers in for Fire Emblem and apparently there's a story writer called Maida right and it's where I think that's his name right 
and it's where he's the guy who's been writing all these really weird foster sibling stories up and going around pretending to be your family and then they find out that they're not actually related to you and then choose to marry you. It's like, that's really weird. And it's like, oh, and by the way, I read somewhere that he made the Fire Emblem Fit story, right? And it's originally, originally like 500 pages long and they only use 10 pages of it and people are like oh I wonder what the other 490 pages are I'm like thinking well I don't think I'm gonna want to know what's in the 490 pages judging that there's already been a lot of foster incest crap all over it so it's like you know it's like yeah it's like there's some really weird th uh, story writers out there it's just like oh my word oh and by the way that's not the only problem with Fire Emblem Fates. They've actually done this before in Radiant Dawn because there's two characters called Soph and Makaya and they literally call each other brother and sister and then right at the end of the game they literally get married because they're not actually related. <laughs> it's just like okay there's some really weird foster crap out there like honestly. I get that they're not tied by blood but it's just really weird. And even other gamers are like, eh, <laughs> which I, <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's just like, have you noticed that it's only ever in Fire Emblem with this foster uh, sibling relation crap that they actually have. It, but it's not in any other game series. <laughs> it's just like, ugh. But you get the point though, don't you? It's just like, yeah, there's some really weird things out there that people make up in their stories. It's just, ugh. And you want to know what the worst part is, right? It's where um, someone actually responded to one of my comments and I said, no, I don't like Mikai and Soph, they're Foster and Seth. And guess what this idiot said? Oh, well, they were only pretending to. And it's like, uh, so you're saying it's acceptable to be Foster and Seth. Okay, you can, you can like go away from me then. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe there are actually like uh, about two or three people who actually support this crap. It's just like, no, this is not acceptable. Even if it's pretend, it's like, well, it's like promoting it in reality. I don't, I, I, just no. Just no, no, just no. <sighs> Maiden, you are like so weird. You know what, right? There's actually another thing I've got to say here. But uh, this is in a different uh, Fire Emblem game that I played, right? Now, most of this other Fire Emblem game is actually quite clean, right? But there was this one pointless side quest, right? And it's where it was for this mage boy, right? Who acts really moody and stuff, right? And it's where you literally have to do like all these different criteria like oh make sure that you get this and this to happen or you have to make sure this happens or you have to make sure you look after the mage boy really well and take him with you to the tower and everything right and it's where i was like thinking oh yeah we're getting right at the end of the side quest i'm hoping for like an ultimate weapon or something right something really cool right and then guess what happens right it's just like some dialogue right and it's not even voiced or anything. And it's basically him going, Wow, I'm a bastard child. No, literally. But you find out that his parents were not even married and got proper horny <laughs> and then just had him. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, what kind of prize is that in a video game? Like, what? It's like no ultimate weapon or anything. It's like that's my prize. You find out someone's a B child. Like really? Like that is. I'm sorry to say this, but that's a garbage prize. It's just like there's like so many side quests in other games, like Final Fantasy and stuff. It's like when you beat a side quest, you usually get like some dialogue, and then you get like. 10 high potions or 10 mega elixirs or oh look an ultimate weapon or oh you gain access to this dungeon where you can uh, get lots of treasure chests and stuff like that but in this weird fire emblem game you do like all this hard work for this mage boy who acts moody anyway and it's where 
you find out he's a bee child like oh my word and it's just like oh i know that's another thing right it's why his dad is literally an ugly mug and his mum's a cow anyway because she literally is a proper snob and looks down on other people by the way uh, the parents are actually royalty if you're wondering so you know it's like Nintendo, Intelligent Systems, I know that you two companies are the owners behind Fire Emblem, but it's like, why do you let a uh, story writer forward slash uh, director be in charge of an IP like Fire Emblem and go around making up bee children up and go around putting in Foster and stuff crap in it? Now, the latter's probably more worse, but that's actually, you know, but it's like, ugh. Uh, I lost a life here. Yeah. However, there are some good news, and it's that uh, I've been looking into a game called uh, Fire Emblem Echoes, and it's nothing like the other games are. So in other words, there's no Foster and Seth crap in it as far as I know, and there's no like bee children in it as far as I know. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like that is a breath of fresh air. It's like, that is... It's, it looks like they've actually changed directors, I'm not sure, or Maida actually decided to actually stop being a weird man for once. But he might just shove his head up his bum again and go, Ooh, let's go and put some more Foster and Seth crap in my new game! It's just like, oh my god, it's just like, Nintendo Intelligent Systems, please fire him, because you have, there's a lot of controversial things on the internet about this. And it's like, this is why I haven't even uh, let's play any Fire Emblem games, because just imagine, just imagine how cringy it would be for me to pretend to be these characters being Foster and Seth or something. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Ah, lost another life. Oh, this is noob style playing. It's like, this is why I like playing Sonic games or Mega Man games or Streets of Rage, which I'm playing right now. Because none of this crap happens. It's just like, it's just basically, you get thrown into the game and you actually fight. And the thing, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just so much. It's just such a big sigh of relief that that Boston and Seth crap and B children don't exist in a lot of other video games. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah, and do you want to know what the crazy thing is? There's people out there going and say, Oh, Fire Emblem's my favourite series! It's just like, I can understand if it's like a gameplay aspect, like the strategy side of things and such, and making friends with people and getting cool weapons. But the honest thing is that there's some really weird things that they come up with it when it comes to the story side of Fire Emblem. That's, that's for sure. So, it depends what the me what people mean by, Oh, Fire Emblem's my favourite series. Like, yeah, is it because you like the weird Foster and Seth crap and the bee children thing? Or is it because of the fights and stuff and the FMVs, you know, the FMV uh, cutscenes? Um, as far as I know, FMV stands for full motion video, so it's kind of like like a full high graphic cutscene. Kind of like uh, Final Fantasy games do it. But basically, Fire Emblem is not my favourite series, definitely not. It's nowhere even in the top 20 games. Oh yeah, that's another thing, I've made a top 25 favourite games of all time, and I think I put Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn at 25, so that's not that high. By the way, it's like one game per franchise, so I put Final Fantasy IX, my second favourite game of all time, and Legends of the Ocarina of Time as my favourite game of all time, and third place, which I did mention in one of my other Let's Plays, uh, Mystical Ninjas is my third favourite game, and I did say that at the end of Mystical Ninjas playthrough that I just did a little while ago. You know, I've only just realised I'm actually on my last life. It's like, uh oh, I've not actually been paying attention to how many lives I've got left. I keep thinking I've got one more life remaining after this one, but oh well. <laughs> quick, let's go grab that birthday cake real quick. Oh, I hit the three kick combo, but at least it doesn't do a lot of damage, but still. Right, I'm gonna have to use my brain to beat the game, that's what one person told me ages ago. <laughs> I think getting myself cornered is a very bad idea, but oh well. I'm proper gonna have to be dodging like a madman. <laughs> I'm surprised they've not even hit me yet. It's like, they keep blocking and it's like they've had like 10 opportunities to have attacked me right there and finished me off. Right, one left there and then I can pick up my birthday cake nearby. Right, let's go! 
Right, okay, now that we're up to the boss, because I'm playing as Shiva, the other guy is like a ghost of him, because it's not going to make sense if we're like exactly the same colour and everything, so we can actually not get mixed up. So I hope I actually win this, because I have no idea if I'm actually going to. Right, so I'm almost on my last legs. <laughs> I hope I win this. Well, at least I got that cake in time, so I don't really have much to worry about. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I would have been able to make a very high combo here anyway. I'm going to have to play defensively by waiting for an opportunity to attack him. Moving up and down seems to actually help here. <laughs> I actually managed to get like 10 hits out of him. Yeah, let's just use this. I forgot I've actually got one left. <laughs> yeah, just remember that he actually does the spin up kick like twice in a row because he tries to trick you into thinking he's only going to do it once, but he doesn't. Oh wow, I'm actually doing really well <laughs> for it being Minya Plus. Either I'm just lucky or I'm just really talented at this, but then again I am using assist for this stage. I managed to bank the points, like wow. <laughs> I think changing his blitz attack to flying kick actually really paid off. Look how well I'm actually doing now that I've actually decided to use it. You know, he doesn't seem to be much harder on Mania Plus. I think they forgot to like buff him up by making him have more health or more higher strength or something, but there you go. But then again, you did have to beat up a lot of his cronies on the way here. Wow, I just managed to do that with an extra life remaining. <laughs> I think I'll stop it here. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to actually show your support, you may tick like, share, or subscribe to my channel. You can even do all three of them if you want to. So yeah, and with that, I'll end up the video. So thanks you for watching.